Well, hey, what is up, everybody? It is Thursday. It is exactly about less than a minute before 10 a.m. And that's right. It's Breakfast in Bible with Pastor Lance. Let's go. So uh, I just want to bring you in and kind of kick off and share. Uh, I had a call coming in. That was weird. Uh, and show you what we got going today. So today we are going to be doing a little bit of a rendition of kind of steak and eggs. So that's just some skirt steak uh, cut into strips. Uh, we're going to be doing some sausage and an onion. Uh, and we got our eggs uh, right there. And so uh, I'm really excited. We're going to go ahead and get our pans uh, started to heat up. Uh, so that's very important. As you may see, this is not my, my regular spot. Uh, kind of show you kind of a quick tour with the uh, around uh, the kitchen. Because I am actually on location in Gainesville because I am speaking at a youth camp this week for a youth pastor friend of mine uh, up near the Gainesville, Alachua area. So I am at my mother and father-in-law's house. Uh, Don and Dini, thank you so much for letting me invade your kitchen. Uh, they are not here, so I'm kind of uh, living a bachelor's pad life, so to speak. And so uh, I'm going to go ahead. Our pans are starting to get hot. Uh, I'm used to uh, being at my house, whereas I have a gas stove. Uh, I have a gas range, uh, but my in-laws have electric. So we're going to let that go ahead and start to heat up. Uh, we're going to put a little bit of the oil OVOO, right? There you go. OVOO uh, into the pan so we can get our. You'll notice that today is primarily a protein packed day. Uh, that is primarily what I consume on most of my breakfasts. Uh, I don't know why my phone is acting all weird, it's wanting to not cooperate with me this morning. So I was just going to bring you in and uh, show you uh, that I'm actually just going to go ahead and uh, we're going to dice up. The, this is a kielbasa, right? This is just a beef. So we're just going to cut that into some equal slices and pieces. And we're going to saute that in the pan in just a moment with our onion uh, this morning. Uh, again, you, you may like some smoked sausage. Maybe you like kielbasa. Uh, this is a beef. Uh, all beef one. So we're just going to get that in some nice slices uh, and we'll get that into the pan in just a moment. Our onion, uh, we're just going to cut into some some strips. Um, get some nice flavor. And again, breakfast uh, is really all about, and we're actually just going to cut this right in half. And we just kind of keep that separated. Uh, we're going to uh, get rid of our knife now because now that we've cut the beef, uh, we don't want to reuse that. And we're going to get ready to put everything uh, into the pan. Put it over in the sink. Wash the hands. Very important. Always a great way to test if your pan is, is hot and ready is you can uh, throw a little bit of water uh, in there and you can kind of hear it in the background. And so uh, the meat and the protein, so I'm going to go ahead and get the, uh, get the onion in there first. Let's go ahead and show you guys what we're doing. I'm having some major technical difficulties this morning with this. And maybe it's because I put a new phone case on my phone uh, this week. And so now it's not liking to sit in the tripod. So we're going to go ahead and get our onion in there. Oh, that's a beautiful sound. You hear that sizzling? Get our onion started. Maybe a little bit more olive oil. Go ahead and season those up with a little bit of salt. Fresh cracked pepper. And actually, um, I'm going to let that start cooking a little bit. 
we're at a medium heat. I don't know why my uh, my egg pan is not coming on. We'll see, hopefully it does. But the onions are starting to get a nice little browning. Toss those around, it's got the olive oil in there. Break those up a little bit, right? Get my nice pieces, start caramelizing uh, that onion. Love it, love it, love it. We're gonna go ahead and drop the beef in. Start getting that. Now you're gonna get that that beef and onion flavor, which is so lovely, right? Toss that. And it's gonna cook really fast because it's already in some strips. And so, we're gonna have more of a uh, steak and eggs, uh, kind of nice protein packed morning. But there again, I, I wanna encourage you, you know, Find what you love. Uh, if you love eggs, you love protein, you love bacon, sausage, whatever it may be. Uh, you know, breakfast is a great way. Now, I want to remind you, breakfast can be at whatever time of the day that you are listening to your body and when you want to eat. Um, but it's a great way to start your day. All right, so it, sounds, it, it seems like our egg. We're going to go ahead and season up the, the beef a little bit. A little salt and pepper. Garlic powder. Love garlic. I probably love garlic a little too much. Uh, we're also going to go ahead and swipe in our sausage. There again, most of your kielbasa's sausages that you're going to get from the store are, they have already been smoked, they've already been cooked. So now you're just kind of wanting to heat them up and get a nice little brown and throw them in there because you're going to get some nice flavoring. Remember that trick? So now we know, like you throw the, the water in there, you get a knife, you know that your eggs are ready. And so we're going to crack those. Get those right into the pan. We're going three eggs today. On the eggs, we're just gonna do salt and pepper. We're getting a nice little steam from our sausage and our protein over here. Oh yeah, that's starting to look real good. Our eggs are cooking. Let's come in for a close-up. Not of my face. Oh yeah, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? That's amazing. Got our eggs going right there. Got our protein. Just gonna kinda continue to give that a little toss. Tongs are great. But what I'm gonna do right now to add in some extra rich flavor is I just threw in a pat of butter. What is a pat, Pastor Lance? A pat of butter is a tablespoon of butter. So right there, I just threw in a pat of butter. And so we're gonna, just gonna continue to, to cook and allow that to, now we're gonna get some nice seasoning. That's gonna get some nice flavor right down in there. You see the steam. Uh, our eggs are ready to flip. And so because I put all three of them into the pan like that, we're gonna make kind of an over easy and we're just gonna flip those right over. A little salt and pepper on both sides of the eggs. Just a couple more tosses. We got a nice caramelizing on the onions because remember we put those in first. 
saying hi to everybody. What's up, everybody? What's up? Thanks for joining for breakfast and Bible. So here's the breakfast part of our morning. That's good. I don't like my uh, beef overcooked, uh, but we got everything nice and caramelized. Got a nice little browning. Mmm. You know, one of the things that uh, I wish sometimes we had is, uh, I wish you could smell uh, the flavors that are all going on here. Our eggs are good. We're going to go ahead and plate. Always important to turn off. Might have overcooked those just a little bit on the eggs. So they're, they're more probably over medium. I like more over easy, but they're probably a little bit more over medium. And we're going to go ahead and plate this yummy goodness. The beef, the onions, the sausage. And sometimes what's great is if you cook a lot like I did today, uh, it's great that you'll have that left over for tomorrow. And just like that, we have our breakfast. Isn't that, isn't that beautiful? Let's go ahead and let's come on over to the breakfast table. There and again, like I told you, I'm at my mother and father-in-law's house. So a little bit uh, different of a setup in the fact that this morning um, they have a kitchen uh, and then they have a dining room uh, type area. So uh, I love uh, the fact that um, you know, I get a little bit of time here this morning with you uh, and as we begin to break in. So again, right there, I know I had a few things that were already prepped and prepared. Uh, mindful, I, I had the sausage out and I had the onion ready uh, to get ready to cut and I had the beef sitting aside and I had my eggs already out. But there and again, it, it's just over 10 minutes. Uh, it's been about 12 minutes and we already have our breakfast prepared. Uh, and so uh, again, I'll show you that lovely plate of food. We got three eggs, uh, just about over easy. Uh, and we have our uh, beef and onions and our sausage uh, this morning. Let's go ahead and open up with a word of prayer as we share. Father God, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for this time and this opportunity to share a meal together, uh, breaking um, our fast, having breakfast uh, with each other, but also diving into your word. Um, Lord, bless this time in your name. Amen. Well, hey, again, I say good morning. Welcome to Breakfast and Bible with Pastor Lance uh, for breakfast. Uh, I hope that you're having uh, a scrumptious, nutritious, incredible breakfast. And whatever that is, I'd love for you to drop it in the comments or message me or drop and say, hey, I love breakfast. Maybe breakfast is not your favorite part of the meal. But guess what? The first meal of the day is the breakfast. Uh, also, don't forget your coffee. And mine's been sitting at the table a little bit, so it's a little, it's a little cold. Uh, that's okay, I like cold coffee as well. So let's dive right in. Uh, let's see. Um, oh, you know what? I thought I overcooked the eggs, but I still got uh, some nice, I like a little, I like some runny yolk uh, with that. And so, uh, actually not bad. Um, still got a lot of runny yolk in there. Again, I like over easy. Um, if you like eggs, tell me, what is your favorite way? Hey girls, my daughters are, are chiming in and watching this morning. Makes, makes a father and a youth pastor proud. Uh, but what is your favorite way to eat eggs? Is it scrambled? Is it over easy? Is it hard boiled? Is it poached? Uh, is it eggs benedict? Uh, there's so many different ways to make eggs. Um, and so I'm going to dive in and get some of this uh, goodness. So I got a little bit of the egg. Let's get some beef. Let's try a little bit of the sausage. Mmm. That is very tasty. And so, as we've continued to, to dive into God's word, as we've continued to, to press in, 
Uh, we are in week number four of the Breakfast in Bible with Pastor Lance, and we are in Philippians. And so I hope and pray that you've been able to continue to read and, and journal. And like last week, we looked at Philippians chapter three, and we are looking at verses 10 and 11. And I want to go back and read those verses again. I, I want you to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. I want to suffer with him, sharing in his death, so that one way or another, I will experience the resurrection from the dead. Uh, It's that we are continuing to want to grow in our knowledge and our understanding of God and his presence uh, and Jesus Christ. And Paul was making that very evident uh, that even from prison, he's wanting to continue to to grow. uh, And he has great affection as we, as we continue to read through Philippians, we, we learn and understand that Paul has great affections for this body of believers and this church and, and the good work that they're doing. So Paul is longing to continue to encourage them, even through suffering, even through hardships and ups and downs that not only does he go through because he's in prison, right? This is from prison with a purpose, like this letter Uh, but also to the church itself that he's like, hey, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, when you face sufferings of all different kinds. So as we dive into Philippians chapter four uh, today, uh, I wanna encourage you that in light of everything that's going on in the world, in light of everything that we're continuing to walk through, through coronavirus and quarantined and social distance and all that kind of stuff, um, Let us continue to find ways to be love and peace uh, to one another, uh, even in everything that we're facing uh, in social justice and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Paul is here to encourage us this morning as we continue to read through the book of Philippians. So we're in Philippians chapter four. So remember, each week we're just taking one chapter a week. And so for you to... uh, to, to read, to change. And so we've been working on the SOAP method uh, in our Bible study time. And so the SOAP is S-O-A-P, Scripture, Observation, Application, and Prayer. And so again, before we get started, we always want to just stop and say, God, what do you want to show me in your Scripture today? And so we are reading to change. We're not just reading to complete. And so I want to encourage you to do that today. So Paul starts out chapter four. He says, therefore, dear brothers and sisters, stay true to the Lord. I love you and long to see you, dear friends, for you are my joy and crown that I receive for my work. Uh, I love how affectionate Paul continues to be in his letters as though we're, I read it as though I'm, I'm almost like, I, like, it's like I know Paul, like we're, we're best buds. He says, dear brothers and sisters, stay true to the Lord. I think that that's, an encouragement for us today in a world of distractions, in a world of things that are longing for our attention, Paul says, hey, stay true to the Lord. Now I appeal to you, Eodoria and Cytiria, please, because you belong to the Lord, settle your disagreement. And I ask you, true, my true partner, to help these two women, for the, they have worked hard with me telling others about the good news. They walked, they worked along Clement and the rest of my co-workers whose names are written in the book of life. Verse four, always be full of joy in the Lord, and I say it again, rejoice. Let everyone see that you are considerate in all you do. Remember the Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything that we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ. Now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true. What is honorable, right, and pure, lovely, and admirable. 
Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all that you've learned and received from me. Everything you've heard from me and saw me doing, then the God of peace will be with you. Hmm. It, it almost feels ironic to break open God's word today uh, and read about peace. And this, I hope, is a timely message and a timely scripture, maybe timely Bible study time for you, a, a great time to hit pause. Uh, last night I was speaking uh, at the camp and, and God brought the metaphor for me for the opening night that just like in sports, a coach sees that maybe something's not going well in the game and he, and, uh, he needs a timeout. And so he gets his players' attentions and, you know, and he calls a timeout. Uh, right here, we, we need to know that maybe today needs to be a timeout. Like timeout seems to have gotten a bad uh, name because we've used it to punish our kids uh, throughout the years. Uh, and that's not the case. That's not what needs to happen here. And the, the section of scripture that I really want to dive in on today is starting in verse four. And, and I really think that, and I've actually already uh, had some underlines in my study Bible here. Uh, but verse four says, always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. Rejoice. Right there, I underlined that and I wrote a little side note in the margin and I said, choose joy. To be always full of joy means that you and I, that we have to make a conscious choice. You know, one of the great things that you and I uh, could be said about us is if you are always on time for your appointments, to your job, to meet up with your friends, or going to this place or that place, if you were always on time, right? You were very courteous of other people's times. You were very aware of when you needed to be somewhere, right? You were very prompt in your arrival. The only way that you could do that is that if you made a conscious choice and you margined your time and you were a good, uh, you, were held, you held yourself accountable to how you spend your time and how you get ready and all those type of things, what time you get up and how you are very prompt. And so uh, the thing about it, when he says always be full of joy, that doesn't say that you're always gonna be happy or that you're always gonna be pleased with every situation. No, Paul is reminding that even during suffering, even during times of despair, that I get to choose joy. What sobering words Paul has for you and I today when he is writing from prison and he's writing to the church and he says, always before, I say it again, rejoice that you choose. He says, let everyone see that you are considerate in all you do and remember the Lord is coming soon. Uh, we've really been saying that for a long time, but it absolutely is true. Are we living our life like the Lord is coming back soon? Or are we just going about our day to day as we think, well, man, he's not coming back anytime soon. There, there is a pristine living that, of course, in the early church, they're reminded that even though he just left, you know, even though it didn't seem that long ago, Jesus was walking the streets there in Jerusalem in Galilee, in Samaria. They are reminded like, no, Jesus, he went away, but he's coming back soon. We need to have that urgency that Paul is reminding us. Verse six, and, and this is where I, I wanna uh, settle down today on. Verse six says, don't worry about anything. And so this is gonna be my verse today. Don't worry about anything. Comma. So we so easily uh, get sucked into there. 
every single one of us. Health, finances, relationships. We, we worry. But Paul says, don't worry about anything, comma. Instead, pray about everything. So don't worry about anything. Easier said than done, Paul. <laughs> Every single one of us would say that if we could tell him. You know, you have that mentor. You have that person that has the right to speak into your life, whether it's a best friend or even a parent or a pastor who will speak into your life. And they says, why are you worrying about that? Give it to God. That's exactly what Paul is doing right here. He says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. I think we get duped as Christians into believing that uh, this, this is too small for God. No, we, we are his children. You've received salvation. Jesus Christ has forgiven you of your sins. You are a child of God. So why wouldn't you exchange what you have anxiety, what you have worry, what you have doubts about, we, we go, we can either continue to go through those doors or we can go through the door, the door of prayer, right? You have this choice that you're gonna go through. Uh, my great friend, um, Spencer Sowers, Pastor Spencer Sowers uh, said that at camp last year, right? We're, we're gonna, we have to have this great exchange. So we gotta stop worrying, don't worry, we're reminded Paul says in verse six, Instead, pray about everything. The big things, the giant things, but also the micro things, the, the little things, that the little tiny worries, the things that are almost feel like not just a sledgehammer that are hammering us down, but even the little tack hammer things. The verse continues to tell God, what you need. And thank him for all he has done. <laughs> I, I, I want to segue here just for a moment. Tell God what you need. Well, Pastor Lance, doesn't God already know what you need? Absolutely, but there is this moment of confession because sometimes what we need to be able to do is speak it out of our mouth. And is that really a need? When we start just, right, or is that a want? Is there a need? Tell God what you need. Food, clothing, shelter, your basic needs of survival, right? Because ultimately, every single one of us, we feel this pressure, we feel this stress, we feel this anxiety coming on us when we feel that our basic needs are not met. So there is some healing that begins to happen when we, when we start praying out loud, when we start journaling down, when we start writing down these things. Tell God what you need and, so this is not a this or that, this is an and, yes and, as Pastor Steve Williams would say, yes and, God, this is what I need. I, my, my car is broken down, or I've been without a job for two months. Uh, my, my, my light bill is due. I don't know how I'm gonna make the mortgage, the rent. God, I'm down to my, my last loaf of bread in the cabinet. God, God sees you, but not only, but thank him for all he has done. God, thank you for, for waking me up today. Thank you for being with me in the midst of the storm. Thank you for being with me in the midst of the suffering. Thank you for being with me and providing and leading and guiding. Thank you for my wife and my children. 
Thank you for the friendships that are in my life. Thank him for all he has done. See, I think so many times you and I, we get stuck here. See, the observation today that I see is that we have to stop worrying. See, Paul's writing to a church. He needs to remind them that, hey, you got to stop worrying and you got to start praying. So there's something to stop and there's something to start. So instead of doing that, do this. So the observation here is that I got to stop the worry and start the praying. In that prayer, I'm going to express my needs verbally to God. I mean, this is not a surprise. I've constantly been reminding my students and others that everything that's going on in the world right now, God knows. He's in control and God is sovereign. We cannot forget that. So we're going to express our needs verbally to God. But then also have a heart of gratitude. And how do we go about doing that? How am I going to apply this to my life today? Is getting up, and I think one of the one of the greatest ways uh, that you can do uh, list. And lists are great for a multitude of reasons. Um, but I would say just do a top three. Just start out by doing a top three. And I would even say you could do a top three uh, of needs. And then a top three of thank yous. All right? And so if 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 the need uh, is, uh, you know, I, I need... I need I need car repairs. Uh, here's a really basic need that I have right now, and I don't know how to speed it up. I'm, I'm just trying to reach out to the right people. Uh, and I know this is a first world problem need, so don't judge me right now. But my, I believe my air conditioner at home is about to go out. So my, a need, my AC unit at home, the one in my garage, it needs to be repaired. So not only do I need car repairs, but I also need my AC repaired. That's, that's a need uh, that I have uh, in my life. Um, and then um, the other need is, um, and, and these, are, these are things that, you know, sometimes you, you may not even feel like you have a ton of needs right now. That's okay. I, I, I personally don't feel like I'm worrying about a ton of things. Um, Um, and so over here, I'm thankful. Uh, I'm thankful for my family, right? Uh, I'm thankful for my, my friends. And I'm thankful for uh, the ministry uh, that God has called me to and I get to do. And so... And you could go on. You can make yours a top five list. It could be, and, and I'm not saying that it has to be three of each. Um, <laughs> but tell God what you need and thank him, for, thank him for all he has done. That was weird that my uh, power just went out on my tripod. But thank him for all he has done. And right there, and this is, this is not a do this and get this, but God's word promises this when we continue to read in verse seven. When you do that, when you stop worrying and start praying, when you start confessing and telling God what is your deepest needs and desires on your life and what you need, you may need peace, you may need, you may need strength, you, need to, you may need to be still in the storm. Paul continues in verse seven. And I want to close it out with this today. Make this your prayer. And then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything that we can understand. See, his peace will guard your hearts 
and your minds as you live in Christ Jesus. That's my prayer for you today. That's my prayer. And I'm just going to, I don't know why the it's not staying up. But I just want to close out with that. I want to read that verse to you one more time. Verse 7 in God's word. Philippians 4, 7. All right, so I'm going to read 6 and 7 again. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. And then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything that we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and your minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Amen. Well, I hope you guys have an incredible day. Let me close out in prayer for us today. Father God, thank you so much for all of my friends, um, for students and parents, moms, dads, aunts, uncles, anybody who will be watching this uh, now or in the near future. But I pray this over their lives. I pray this word. I pray that it would come in and it would change their lives. Lord, uh, as Paul encourages, let's continue to be imitators of the word and doing what you've called us to do. Lord, let us stop worrying. Let us start praying. Let us start confessing our needs to you. And let us thank you for all that you've done. Thank you so much, Lord, for this day. Thank you, Lord, for this time. Uh, be with us now, Lord, as we go out into the world and be salt and light for you in your name. Amen. Hey, I love you guys. Have a beautiful and blessed day.